It'll feel kind of slimy or slick. Then you feel a little bit of roughness because the scales have a texture. You know, there's a landscape of hills and valleys that the scales create. After so many years of this odd ritual, people in Portland, Texas don't bat an eye when they drive by and see Dinah Bowman giving a bath to a dead fish. It's just like any other art. You know, each artist has their own idiosyncrasies, if you will. For decades, the carcasses of everything from mullet to marlin, ballyhoo, bluefish, redfish, tuna, and tarpon have found a place in Dinah's art studio and frame shop. I do all my color blending directly on the fish. With paper, paint, and patience, Dinah reaches back almost two centuries in this obscure Japanese art form called giotaku, something she mastered almost 50 years ago. I can feel every scale. This is the tricky part. Each one is an original. Look at that. Wow. Well, you haven't lost it, have you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See all the, the scales, mm -hmm. how they stand out. This is to create a memory for the fishermen. For so many anglers on the Texas coast, Dinah's studio is the first stop after a long fishing trip. I've exhibited at Smithsonian, and my work was chosen to travel with the Smithsonian Institute Traveling Exhibition Service throughout the U.S. and Canada and Australia. More recently, I've had shows in New Zealand and Korea and Japan. How does that feel? It was incredible. It's still incredible. How do you know what to work on, Dinah? Well, I have a freezer full of goodies. And uh, <laughs> this one's really interesting. Dinah, this looks like this fish has been in here for 30 years. That's a pompano. Here's a little flounder. Dinah traveled to Japan to learn what to do with a fish after you catch it. Well, it was way back in 1990 when we made our first trip to Dinah Bowman's studio in this very same building, still in all of the same creativity. People come in the shop and sometimes they, they don't really believe that I take rubbings of the real fish. Usually your first prints are not as good as your consecutive ones because the fish is not well saturated with ink. None of us ever intended to meet back here because three this, decades this later, and yet selfie. we have. <laughs> Just in time to help Dinah with her latest creation, it seems with every piece, she keeps pushing the boundaries of this storied art form. To me, with what I do, it's memory making. This tuna is 12 feet long, and this fish weighed almost 650 pounds. My goodness. And so I don't lift fish this heavy, so we printed it on the dock with a team of five other volunteers that help us, you know, lay the fabric down on the fish and then lift it off. I think what's so wonderful about this experience is the fact that y'all wanted to come back and spend time with me 30 years later. We were pretty fascinated then. So we said, we've got we to check in with Dinah and see, is she still doing this? Are things still the same? And I think for the most part, they are. What's amazing, it's not just you, Bob. It's the same cameraman too. <laughs> We found out 30 years ago, if you want to hear a good fish tale, forget the bait and tackle shops. It's a tiny cinder block building in Portland, Texas, where Dinah Bowman has been putting the finishing touches on so many fishing trips. With a little paint and a gentle stroke, 
a self-portrait emerges from the deepest ocean. What's the same from 30 years ago is these hands. It's the same touch, it's the same feel, and I'm not done yet. I love that story. Me too, and we've got plenty more where that came from. Just click on the subscribe button and keep traveling with us.